ASME B30.9 outlines the inspection of wire rope slings. Initial inspection. Prior to use, all new, altered, modified, or repaired wire rope slings shall be inspected by a designated person. Frequent inspection. A visual inspection for damage shall be performed by the user or other designated person each day or shift the wire rope sling is used. Periodic inspection. A complete inspection for damage to the wire rope sling shall be periodically performed by a designated person. Inspection shall be conducted on the entire length, including splices, end attachments, and fittings. Periodic inspection records for wire rope slings are not required by Federal OSHA for general purpose use. However, ASME B30.9 requires documentation that the most recent periodic inspection was performed. Periodic inspection intervals shall not exceed one year. The frequency of periodic inspections should be based on frequency of sling use, severity of service, nature of lifts being made, and the experience gained. The inspection of wire rope slings is usually a visual examination. This visual inspection requires a thorough understanding of what to look for. Inspect all slings daily, and especially before any important lift. Look carefully for all the usual suspects. Frayed, worn, and broken wires. Cuts, kinks, and dog legs. Corrosion, crushing, loose strands, and any other signs of trouble. Check for a loss of rope diameter indicating a possible broken core. A broken core is extremely dangerous and calls for immediate replacement of the rope. A dog leg can be used as long as the wire strands haven't been moved, cut, or dislodged. This rope is not acceptable because the strands have been displaced. Pay special attention to the rope's pickup points and terminations. Those are the sections of rope most likely to fail. Don't use a sling that's had an eye formed by wire rope clips or knots. Use only professionally designed lifting devices. Also, be sure to check the rope's load capacity before you use it, and never exceed the manufacturer rated capacity. Doing so puts everyone on the job site at risk. Inspect all the hardware before the start of each shift the hooks, clamps, rings, and shackles. If they don't meet the manufacturer's standards, don't use them. Either retire them permanently or take them to the tool house for repair. Inspect for broken wires by examining the worst section of the wire rope sling. Place a rope lay across this section. A rope lay is the distance from where a strand spirals down and back up. As a rule of thumb, one rope lay is often 7 to 8 diameters of rope. ASME B30.9 states that during the inspection, if you find 10 randomly broken wires in one rope lay, or 5 broken wires in one strand within one rope lay, this is reason to remove the sling from service. Inspect for metal loss. This includes wear or scraping of the outside individual wires. Inspect for corrosion. Severe corrosion of the rope or end attachment which has caused pitting or binding of the wires is cause for removal from service. Light rusting usually does not affect the strength of the sling, but it does indicate the need for relubrication. Kinking, crushing, bird caging, or other damage which distorts the rope structure is cause for removal. Look for wires or strands that are pushed out of their original positions in the rope. Slight bends, where wires or strands are still relatively in their original position, would not be considered serious damage. Eye deformation is not usually detrimental to sling strength, as long as there are no broken wires or gross distortions of the lay of strands. A sling should be removed from service when distortion locks the strands or flattens the rope in the eye so that strands cannot move and adjust. Inspect for any metallic discoloration or loss of internal lubricant caused by exposure to excessive heat. The strength of wire rope slings can be degraded by chemically active environments. Sling materials may be susceptible to damage from caustic or acidic substances, vapors, or fumes. Strong oxidizing environments attack all common sling materials. The sling manufacturer or qualified person should be consulted before slings are used in chemically active environments. ASME B30.9 
states that missing or illegible sling identification is cause for removal from service, and replacement of sling identification is considered a repair. ASME B30.9 goes on to say, slings shall be repaired only by the sling manufacturer or a qualified person. A repaired sling shall be marked to identify the repairing agency. The wire rope used in the sling shall not be repaired. Repairs shall be restricted to end attachments and fittings. All repaired slings shall be proof tested except when replacing identification. For many years, ASME B30.9 has required that wire rope slings have proper identification. The sling must be marked with the following minimum information. 1. The name or trademark of the manufacturer. 2. The rated load for at least one hitch type and the angle upon which it is based. 3. The diameter or size. And 4. The number of legs if more than one. Effective July 8, 2011, OSHA now requires that employers use only slings with permanently affixed identification markings that show the maximum load capacity for each sling. Slings with illegible identification or missing identification markings are to be removed from service. The inspection of chain and synthetic slings includes 1. Initial inspection upon purchase 2. Frequent inspection by a competent person prior to each use and 3. Periodic, at least annual inspection accomplished by a qualified person as part of a thorough inspection program. These inspections are usually accomplished by a visual examination for damage and abuse. In severe duty and special circumstances, non-destructive testing may be required in addition to the visual inspection. The inspection of chain slings is usually a visual examination. This visual inspection requires a thorough understanding of what to look for. Periodic inspection records are required by Federal OSHA and ASME B30.9, and inspection records must include the condition of the chain sling. Use only grade 8 or 80 alloy or grade 10 or 100 alloy chain slings for general purpose rigging. Periodic inspections and written logs are required for all lifting chains, and they're strongly recommended for all other types of slings. Keeping the records accurate and up-to-date not only keeps you and your employer in compliance with the law, it helps identify problems early so you can take action and prevent accidents. Chain that's used for lifting must be grade 8 or 10 alloy steel. Most manufacturers identify grade 8 chain with the number 8 or 80 and grade 10 with the number 10 or 100. But whatever method the manufacturer uses, just be sure it's marked to indicate at least grade 8 or 10 alloy steel. Also, keep this in mind. Chain used for cargo or vehicle tie-down and transport is designed and rated differently than chain designed for lifting. If you have any questions, check with your rigging equipment supplier to be sure you're using the right kind of chain. When you inspect a chain sling, look for stretched, bent, cracked, worn or broken links. These are all signs that the chain no longer has its original strength. If a chain is damaged in any way, don't use it. Your life and the lives of other people are at stake. Sling Identification Chain Slings ASME B30.9 requires that all chain slings have permanently affixed identification stating size, grade, rated load and angle it is based on, reach, number of legs, manufacturer, and individual sling identification, such as a serial number. Clean each sling prior to inspection to allow a visual inspection. Check for cracks, nicks, or gouges. Sharp transverse gouges should be rounded out by light grinding. Do not exceed the wear allowance. Check for excessive wear. If any portion of any link exceeds the allowable wear shown below, remove from service. Measure the reach of sling legs to make sure they correspond to the value stamped on the chain sling identification tag. If any leg is longer, there is a possibility that the sling has been subjected to overloading or excessive wear. The inspection of web and round slings is usually a visual examination. This visual inspection requires a thorough understanding of what to look for. Inspect synthetic webbing in a similar way. Look for cuts, tears, fraying, and signs of abrasion. 
Other warning signs include strapping that's been stretched out of shape or has broken stitches, burns, or holes. Periodic inspection records for synthetic slings are not required by federal OSHA. However, ASME B30.9 requires documentation that the most recent periodic inspection was performed and shall be maintained. Inspection records of individual synthetic slings are not required. Sling Identification Synthetic Slings ASME B30.9 requires all synthetic webbing and round slings to be permanently marked to show the name or trademark of the manufacturer, the manufacturer's code or stock number, rated loads for the three hitches, type of synthetic web material, and number of legs if more than one. Heat damage is cause for removal. Heat damage can occur when a flame or hot metal contacts the web sling. Heat damage can also be caused by friction melting. Friction melting can occur when using a web sling in a choker configuration and the web sling is rapidly pulled through the eye. The web material becomes brittle and stiff. Holes, tears, cuts, snags, or embedded particles are cause for removal from service. Face cuts are very dangerous. Edge cuts can be just as dangerous. If there are red threads in the web sling and they become exposed, remove the sling from service. Knots are prohibited in any part of the sling, and discoloration and brittle or stiff areas could be an indication of damage caused by chemicals or ultraviolet sunlight damage. These are all causes for removal of slings. When inspecting polyester round slings, it is important to remember that if the cover is damaged by heat or chemicals, the sling must be removed from service. The cover does not provide protection against melting, charring, or weld sputter. Any breach in the cover of round slings is cause for removal, even if the fibers look good. If the round sling has a red inner lining and it is exposed, remove the sling from service. It is important to note that whenever a designated person is assigned to inspect any type of sling, as mentioned in this video, it is assumed that they are qualified to perform the inspection necessary.